Hi everybody, we're gonna do a quick video on how to use Python to solve linear algebra, right? So systems of linear equations. Now you might remember this from your math class. Remember you had scenarios like this where they had these three equations and they had three variables. And we know that if you've got three equations with three unknowns, technically you can solve it. But it was kind of a pain. There's lots of ways that they taught you in algebra. You either like singled out one of these and then you started doing substitutions into the other ones. Or sometimes you'd subtract from the two equations trying to get something to cancel out or divide. Um, those ways work, but there's a much easier way, and it's by using linear algebra and matrices. So here's how it works. You write the systems out with the different variables on the left and what they're equal to on the right. Now, these individual variables, you take the coefficients, and we're going to store those in a matrix. Since we're dealing with three equations with three unknowns, we're going to end up with a three by three matrix, right? So for example, in this first equation, it's 1x plus 1y plus 1z, so we get 1, 1, 1 for our coefficients. But the second equation doesn't have x, and it's 2y plus 5z. So it's 0, 2, and 5. Right? So this represents x, y, and z. The last equation is 2x plus 5y minus z. So it's going to be 2, 5, minus 1. Okay? So we'll call that matrix A. Right? Then we need a matrix over here representing our solutions. Right? We'll call that B. And then if you multiply... Um, this matrix of our coefficients times a matrix representing your x, y, and z values, we'll call this capital X, then you would get B, right? In other words, A times X equals B. And therefore, if we want to solve for capital X, the matrix representing our x, y, and z values, all we need to do is rearrange this equation, and it would be X equals what? B divided by A, or in other words, B times the inverse of A, right? That is the idea behind um, linear algebra, is it makes it really simple. So how do we do that with code? Well, first off, we're going to bring in a library that's going to help us work with matrices. And I, you probably already know what it's going to be. It's going to be NumPy, right? So we're going to import NumPy as NP. Now we need to create matrices, matrices to represent A and B. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say A is equal to NumPy.Array. Use the round brackets first. Then we're going to use square brackets to make these different rows. Now. We're going to start it with one set of square brackets. That's going to be a matrix. But there are three rows in there. So we're going to do three more square brackets inside separated by commas. And then inside each square bracket set there, we're going to do the three numbers. So 1, 1, 1. Over here, we've got 0, 2, 5. Over here, we've got 2, 5, negative 1. So we've built the matrix for A. And if you're not sure and you want to double check, you can test it really easily. Let's go ahead and just run it. Pull this open and yeah, we got that right. Okay, so now let's go ahead and build one for B. Now B goes vertically down, so it's going to look a little bit different. NP dot array. Now it's going to be um, like it does. A, it's going to look like it does above, but we're just going to put one number in each one of these square brackets. It's going to be six. It's going to be four. That's negative four, excuse me, and twenty-seven. Okay, so great. We've now got both of our matrices. Uh, all we have to do is solve for x. So there are two ways to do this. Um, first off, we could do it just literally, like I said before, you take the inverse of a and you multiply it times b with a, with a dot product. So we could do that by hand. We could do np um, dot, right? So we're going to use the dot method. And the two matrices that we're going to do are A and B. So let's put B second. Now, how do we do A? It's not just A. It's the inverse of A. So for that, we're going to do numpy.linalg, right? So we're going to go to linear algebra method, and we're going to take inverse, INV, and give it A. Okay? So technically, that should be the solution. That new matrix which we've created, X, should have the values for X, Y, and Z. So we could go ahead and print X, just like so. Let's go ahead and run this whole thing. And sure enough, it spits out. 5, 3, and negative 2, which is right. In fact, we could even format this if you wanted to. We can make this a little bit better. So we're going to put the f in front of it, and then we're going to do the string. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to do um, x is, and then we use these curly brackets to fill it with a value. So we're going to do x in the zeroth position. Then we're going to say y is, curly brackets, and we're going to do x in the 1 position. Three, and then and z is curly brackets x in the two position there we go so that would be one way to uh, solve this now if you didn't remember these steps 
what's really great is they have a pretty awesome solver. So we can just do this. We can come down here and we can say that um, we'll just call it, well, we'll call it x, um, x, right? Just to differentiate from the first one we did. And you simply have to do np, so numpy.linalg, and then you just do solve and give it a and b, right? So we're giving it this and we're giving it that and we're saying solve for it and we're storing that. If we print this, xx, let's compare the two and they are the exact same. 5, 3, negative 2, doing it by, you know, by memory if you remembered the math or just telling the solver to do it, 5, 3, and 2 the exact same way. So NumPy is a powerful tool for solving systems of linear equations. It makes it a whole lot easier than trying to do these substitutions or whatever. This is how your calculator did it way back in the day and it's how um, modern solvers deal with linear equations so quickly. Now, in our next video, we're gonna dive into nonlinear equations. They're a little bit more tricky.